Hey, it is Craig the Pool Man with Pool Specialists. Today we've got a short video on how to program up a variable speed pump using the old school one touch from Jandy. Now, this is true for any of the Jandy variable speed pumps, and it also works with the Pentair variable speed pumps as well. So this is what that panel looks like. And typically the black face that you see here, that would be for the remote one, which if you have a remote that still works, that is absolutely amazing. Uh, normally the one that goes on the wall is white, but you can get them in different colors. So this is what the panel looks like. So in order to program the pump, right, you would have to come down here, use this arrow key, and it's very touchy. Hit the menu button. Now you're going to have to come all the way down to system setup, and you select that. And you could actually page down through tons and tons of things, but it's probably easier just to go up and you want to go to where it says variable speed pump and now we're going to select that and sometimes these things are touchy okay so here's where we're going to choose whether we have a jandy variable speed pump or a pentair variable speed pump so we'll select this So here we would choose our pump, pump one, two, three, or four. And if you had a Jandy variable speed pump, you choose through the dip switches, whether it's pump one, two, three, or four. If you have a Pentair one, then you have to go into the menu and the old IntelliFlows allow you up to four different pumps. However, if you have a newer Pentair pump such as a VST or something like that, like a Whisperflow VST or a Superflow VST, then that you would actually only be allowed to assign pump one and pump two. So you can see here that this has been assigned to an e-pump, that's the default. If I was going to assign it to a Pentair pump variable speed, I would set it to that. So then you would just use your arrow key. But in, for this purpose, we're just going to go ahead and stick with the E-pump. And now we're going to hit the back button. And we have now chosen what we're doing with that. Now we have to come down and we have to choose the pump application. So we can assign up to eight pumps on this. We're going to choose pump one, and we are going to make that the filter pump. So now that's defined as the filter pump. And we come back again. I'm really not gonna mess with the min-max settings because there's just, it, it's so contorted to do this. This is kind of like programming your smart TV from your 1980 VCR and uh, so forget the labels prime forget all that you can fill that in if you want pump name you can fill it in this is going to be the filter pump by default so pump one or filter pump whatever you want to call it and now We want to assign the speeds and the labels. And we're going to go to pump one. And we're going to set our speeds. So the pool is default at 1750, which probably is not bad. It's a little bit on the low side. And then, of course, you can go ahead and change that 
if you'd like, and then back, keep going. And now it saves it. You have your spa speed. You can set your spillover speed, your pool heat, your spa heat. You probably don't have solar heat, in-floor, freeze protect, things of that na nature. So that is how you set all your speeds in these pumps. And whether you have a Jandy variable speed pump or a Pentair variable speed pump, this is going to set up exactly the same. Now, if you wanted to label things, go ahead and label them. I don't see a need to change most of them. And if you wanted to assign particular speeds to auxiliaries, and this is more important if you're trying to configure a water feature pump, because typically you're going to have certain things on that water feature that um, you're going to do. But let's just say that you had a waterfall and your actuator turned on with the waterfall. You may have that waterfall assigned to auxiliary one. And then if you hit auxiliary one, then you can actually come in and you can assign the speeds to one of them. So this is how to program variable speed pumps. Again, it doesn't matter whether you are a Pentair pump or a Jandy pump with what's called a one touch system, um, which is incredibly archaic. If you look at the pricing of this, if you had to replace it, it would actually be more cost effective to go ahead and get the IAquaLink set up that you could actually use it on your phone. So simple enough. You just have to keep going through tons and tons of different tree levels in order to get to what you want. If you already have one of these systems, you're probably somewhat familiar with running through the tree systems. If you're not familiar with the tree system, you can download from the Jandy website, the instruction manual for the board, and it will give you all the trees and tell you how they branch out. So I hope that is helpful. And I hope that this has been educational if it is, please drop me a like and follow us. And any comments, if you'd like to see future videos, please put them down in the notes. Thank you so much and have a great day.